I have been working as a journalist for six months now in the hospital setting. We are going to have a chat about some things I wish I knew before I took this journey of medical lab science, as well as if there are any steps along the way that I would have done differently with the knowledge that I have now. All the topics we will talk about are just pertaining to my transition from student to new grad to now where I work all departments of the laboratory in microbiology, blood bank, hematology, coagulation, urinalysis, and chemistry. Just know that my opinion is my personal opinion about my own journey and does not reflect on my employer nor the program that I attended. But yeah, so this first topic is training as a new grad during a pandemic. Y'all, I wish I knew what training would be like. I wish someone would have prepared me to enter this field during a pandemic, even though we're towards the tail end of it, the effects are still there. Like due to the nature of the field at the moment, there is a major, like real critical lack of medical technologists and technicians. And honestly, this shortage has impacted me starting at my clinical rotations last year, all the way to now into my first job. I was hired onto a critically understaffed shift unbeknownst to me, so I was trained up really fast on my night shift because there was nobody else to work. I was it. <laughs> Overall, understaffing has been my experience from techs leaving for retirement or traveling jobs or just leaving the field, period. But just know like all the stuff I may vent about is what I've allowed myself to tolerate and I get that. So I hope that you don't judge me for putting up with certain conditions as I share my experience because this is my first job in the lab. And there's a lot of that I am just truly naive about as I learn along the way in this career. But yeah, so I was taught how to run each department in a few days to a few weeks, if that, literally. <laughs> I'm not going to go in depth on my training experience, but of course, I've had to ask tons of questions along the way. I got lucky because I have patient coworkers that are nice enough to answer questions about decision making. But y'all, it's been sink or swim for me. I've heard similar things from other new grads as far as training goes, so this shortage could be impacting a lot of us. I know not every facility is like the next, not every city is like the next, not every state, and so on, but I really think healthcare is going through a huge change right now. And it sucks because I love the lab environment, I enjoy my job, but I'm so concerned about burning out early in my career. Like, it's a real concern that I have, especially working on night shift. I don't want to be too negative for the new grads that are getting ready to graduate or have just graduated or are looking at graduating soon, whatever. For the new grads, the main expectation or what I had to push myself to remember is that you are responsible for learning your policies, you perform techniques and you make decisions that are within your policies and that is all they can really ask of you. I'm at six months and I'm wondering why everyone is coming to me with their questions and problems asking me how we're supposed to do things and I look around and then I realize that I'm the tech that has been here the longest on the shift and it's just crazy <laughs> it's just crazy like I've talked to other new grads in healthcare as well and they have had similar experiences it's a really weird position to be in but I deal with it when it happens. I don't really do anything without consulting my policies beside me. I know it's crazy, but there's nobody else. And it's really stressful. And I'm not even gonna mention confidence because I don't feel like I'm there yet. There's just so many scenarios that I haven't experienced for me to really know if I can handle it. Um, there's some days where everything just clicks and there's other days where I feel like a newbie all over again. So especially if I get stuck in one area for too long, <laughs> I do kind of forget when I rotate back to, into the other areas. Like I know I'm laughing and being lighthearted, but that is just my response to stress. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm venting about my transition, but I didn't quit. <laughs> I have not quit yet. I have not shed a tear yet. It's just, I'm dealing with a lot of growing pains and learning curves. But like I said, I love the job. I love my responsibilities in relation to patient care. My facility in particular never gets dull. It never gets boring. There's always something new and random to learn and experience, but short staffing has impacted me a lot. And that is just the main point I'm trying to get across. The last thing I want to do is scare anybody that is trying to enter this field right now because <laughs> we need people. We need more techs. I guess a positive to all this is that since I work independently at night, 
I've been able to build my critical thinking skills as a generalist um, from antibody workups and typing discrepancies to troubleshooting analyzers or QC or dealing with interesting specimens, like learning how to use my best judgment to figure out what to do next in a timely manner has at least allowed me to really build my critical thinking skills. And so every time something new comes up, I've learned to brace myself for the opportunity to learn. And that is how I've trained my brain to look forward to new obstacles and challenges at work. Because if I experience it once and take good notes, then I should have a better idea of what to do if it happens again. And eventually these things will become second nature. Don't ask me when, but I've been told eventually the confidence will come. Hmm, that was a loaded topic. <laughs> okay, so the next topic is undergraduate debt. I wish I had found out about this field when I was in high school. I literally didn't know about medical laboratory science until my senior year of college. Basically, because it has taken me a second degree to enter this field, my debt from my first undergrad degree is racking up. If I could do things differently, I would have gotten just one undergrad degree in medical laboratory science. The rule of thumb is that you take out as much money as you expect to make per year. But truthfully, my debt right now is higher than my pay scale and that will not change if I stay at my current job. So I'm trying my best to prevent burnout in my first year and eventually with more experience, I'll be able to make more money when I qualify for better opportunities in the future. So I'm not worried about my current pay because in six more months, I'll make more money. And basically after a year of experience as a generalist will open up doors for many other opportunities that I don't qualify for right now. So I'm not worried, but <laughs> school is costly. <laughs> and I wish I knew about the field sooner because it would have saved me a shit ton of money. Even now, I'm kind of looking at going back to school again, but I'm trying to figure out how am I going to pay for it. Next topic. So student work experience in specimen accessioning. I did not work as a lab assistant while I was in school. I wish I knew how valuable that experience would be to help me in my first job in a lab. Ashamed to say it, but during my first week of training, it took me a while to grasp tube requirements for analytes. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention to school. I think had I had a sessioning experience, I would not have had to work so hard to wrap my head around the concept. I truly was embarrassed because my whole first week training in chemistry, I didn't know like, does this tube need to be spun down? Does it need to be on ice? Can we perform this test on other tubes that we might be storing for the patient? The amount of time we had to perform the test after we received it, like all that stuff was a headache. And I felt so stupid for not already knowing, especially when doctors would call to ask if a test could be ran on a tube that we were storing. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> so that entire first week I had to always ask somebody else because I didn't have an answer. I mean, I guess that's what training is for, but that entire first week was rough. I did not have a good transition with, with receiving. So I wish I knew that working as a lab assistant would have been beneficial for me when I was in school. I might have avoided the lack of knowledge with these specimen requirements. Um, although I do wish I could have gotten a lab assistant job during my time as a student, I chose not to since I wanted the weekends to rest and just be with my family because now that I'm working full time, I don't get that anymore. I did not get a lab assistant job with good reason because at the time I was already working full time and it just didn't fit with my schedule. But regardless, I did spend time on the weekends to prepare for my future. I researched what I needed to do before the ASCP exam, how to get my resume ready, how to apply to jobs and get ready for interviews. So I really am glad that I had time to figure out my next steps early and not have to scramble at the last minute. This allowed me to have choices with my first job and secure what I hoped was the best job for me coming out of school. I chose it because it allowed me to be a true generalist in all departments so that I could see what departments I actually like and which ones I don't like and could kind of make a decision on where I see myself working long term. So looking back, I'm glad that I didn't stretch myself too thin with working as a lab assistant because it allowed me to focus on entering the field. But that's just me. Um, anyway, <laughs> next topic, was school worth it? So the last topic is, was school worth it? It was worth it for me, but let me tell you why. I live in a licensed state, so facilities are required to have certified professionals doing the lab testing and reporting results. That meant there was no way I could use my biology degree to get a job as an unlicensed tech and work until I was eligible. The way to go and get in this field in my state is to go through a formal NACLS accredited training program and get nationally certified through ASCP or ANT. Believe me, I tried to bounce around it. I applied to so many hospitals with my first degree and 
they really do just kind of throw the application out if they don't see that you're certified or that you at least did clinicals and are eligible for certification. So because I decided to stay in my state, I had to go back to school to be eligible to take the national exam. I don't really regret going back to school, I guess, because it gave me a chance to qualify for work in the hospital laboratory setting, which was my goal and it was what I wanted. I do kind of wish I would have just gotten a master's though. <laughs> So I wouldn't have to go back to school again, which I'm looking at starting my next degree. I kind of decided what I want to study, but I'm not 100% sure yet. It's like I'm just all over the place right now. A lot of things will have to fall in place perfectly in order for me to go back to school that quickly. But, you know, I do know that I definitely want to pursue my master's at least. At least. <laughs> at the very least. <laughs> But yeah, those are just a few topics of what I wish I knew before becoming a medical lab scientist. These are kind of just the things that affected my transition entering the field from student to actually working, practicing lab technology or lab medicine. But um, yeah, so I'm starting a new series on my channel where I just have a candid chat about my journey and experiences along the way. This is with the intention of helping this small community grow and to let us get to know each other to see how our experiences are similar to one another. So I do hope you guys feel comfortable enough to share your experience in the comments below. And as we end this video, let me ask you, what are some things you've learned along the way in your career journey? Wherever you are, whether in school or working, let's share our lessons and tips with each other for today's video in the comments below. So yeah, we have talked about my journey so far and what I wish I knew along the way. Hopefully this chat was helpful to anyone thinking about their career decisions. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to keep up with my journey in the lab. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>